Good morning. And how are you? It's a very rare view of my drive there. We've got the webcam. Mm. Not early. I hope to go the more straightforward route. There we go. Had a bit of rain overnight. Weather's been a bit rubbish. Well, certainly from the flying point of view. I was at Centre Parks last week. We had a lovely week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Scorchio. Friday we uh, drove around Woburn Safari Park. Oh, and it was pouring hard all day. So we went and saw a bunch of drowned lions and a bunch of drowned uh, tigers. Let me just uh, retract my mirror. Because we had these lunatics driving down these narrow roads. So how are you? All right, trust you're well. We've been having a bit of trouble with uh, computer work. Uh, the screen keeps going black, very frustrating. But uh, I've taken some of the memory, taken half the memory out of it. And believe it or not, it's actually running just as fast. And it hasn't crashed since, so I'm wondering if it's got mismatched memory or something. That's a uh, trouble with a, a fault like just a black screen on the boot up is it's not, because it's not a simple. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially when the computer's been working perfectly fine up to that point. So, uh, it usually means it's like a hardware fault. Something like a memory board or a power supply. Anyway, the point of the story is I've ordered a new computer. Because this, uh, this one, we've had it at about five, four or five years and it's a... Uh, it was a hand-me-down. It's not even a current... I, I got it. Someone gave it to me for nothing. And, uh, I mean, I know a bit about computers, so, I mean, it's, it's not a bad computer. Um, you know, and if I replace the memory, it's probably been just as good as it was. But uh, my uh, ex-son-in-law's work was upgrading their computers, and they gave people a choice between a new desktop or a laptop, and everybody chose laptops. So they had a load of uh, desktops that they didn't need and uh, of course they needed to make way for everybody's new laptops. And so, which is a good question. I've always wondered where your lap goes to when you stand up. But anyway, philosophy aside, uh, yeah, it's a Dell, so it's okay, I like Dell. I've always uh, bought Dell. They're like, uh, you know, your computer friends will always tell you that you, all you could get was something much faster for half the price. But A, you can't. And B, uh, you know, you don't want to be building computers. You certainly don't want at my age. Uh, when I was younger, I did. So. So, work one. How's the mandem? I had a woman who came in <clears throat> day before yesterday. All her teeth crowned. early 60s uh, had a didn't <clears throat> she had 77 upper 77 crown didn't like the color of the upper left seven <clears throat> crown so had it replaced free of charge by the dentist then uh, the dentist when he stuck it on Hello. said that uh, he thought that the tooth was probably going to need a root filling and telling telling this this is a funny thing whereby dentists tell people that their tooth is probably going to need a root filling and if your dentist has told you that your tooth is probably going to need a root filling then that means it definitely needs a root filling and it needs it right now but they don't want to do the root filling okay because it's not you know they think they might have to do it free of charge or they might attach, some blame may be attached to the reason for the root filling, which relates to some work they've done or uh, 
they think the patient's going to balk at uh, adding the cost of a root filling, which is not inconsiderable to the treatment plan cost, or uh, allege that the uh, work that you know related work has been done negligently, which caused the root filling, which will lead to a complaint. So it's much easier for the dentist just to do something to, you know, to hopefully delay the onset of symptoms for, I don't know, three to six months or something. And then there's enough clear water then between uh, them knowing the, the two things, a root filling and the patient becoming aware that a root filling is necessary and, and needs to be done. Why is it with these birds dive bombing me today? So, the way this always used to be done was with a stuff called Ledimix. Ledimix is manufactured by Septadon, which is a French company. And the French love their drugs. They, uh, and their uh, suppositories. They uh, use uh, drugs in situations where we wouldn't so for example, uh, inside a root filling, a root treatment, which is basically a tooth which is hollow, is full of infection, uh, we would, in a, in, on the National Health Service, if you've only got two minutes, we would issue a prescription. And the purpose of a prescription is basically to shut the patient up and get them out of the surgery because you've got five patients waiting. Uh, extensively used during the COVID outbreak, theory being that uh, at least the prescription prevents the infection spreading outside the tooth. Can't do anything about the infections inside the tooth because there's no blood supply there so there's no way the antibiotics can, can reach the infection inside the tooth but hopefully it stops it getting any worse. Yeah. Then next on the list of sort of uh, British ways of dealing with infection is to open up the tooth and put some sort of antiseptic inside it something like uh, cresaphine which is a uh, camphorated paramonochlorophenol and uh, very powerful antiseptic it has to be used in very very small doses is because it's irritant if you soak a cotton wool pledge it in uh, in uh, phenol and stick it inside a tooth and seal it up then the patient's going to be in more pain than they were from the infection so you literally you have to put a drop on a cotton wool pledge it and then squeeze it out with a tissue until it's as dry as you can get it and then put it inside the tooth. So there must just be the smell of phenol on it. That's all you need. And then you seal it inside the tooth and the uh, phenol evaporates uh, up the roots and uh, it is very, very powerful at sort of, uh, not sterilizing, but disinfecting the canal. And because uh, any pain is caused by the pressure of the bacteria growing, then as the bacteria die off, the pressure goes away and then the pain goes away. And also you've opened the tooth, which has also released the pressure. So that's a very, very effective way of uh, dealing temporarily with acute pain from root fillings. Um, unfortunately, not very widely practiced in the UK because um, Dentists don't, don't on, on the whole, reserve the time to carry this sort of procedure out. Uh, what they'd rather do is give you antibiotics and then make you another appointment to come back and get the root filling done. And that's because they get paid. That's how, how we get paid. And opening a tooth and filling it with uh, cresaphine is not a chargeable event. Uh, so you might as well just uh, give them antibiotics and... Uh, which used to be a chargeable thing, and then uh, and then and then do another chargeable thing, which was the root filling. So then, of course, uh, up the ladder then is starting the root treatment. The, it's going in for service. <laughs> I think it's my left arm that needs a service, not the car. Start, yeah, starting the root treatment and completing it. And we usually complete our root fillings over one visit unless, you know, it turns out that they've got tiny, tiny canals or block canals or bent canals or something, in which case, if I get fed up after about an hour or so, I have been known to seal it up with, with Cresphine and then, and then finish it at a later date. 
but the patient's out of pain by then. Now, we were talking about the French. What the French will do is they will open the tooth up and instead of putting cresol in it, they'll put uh, a steroid, some sort of uh, anti-inflammatory bioactive ingredient. Um, I don't know what the theory is. I'm assuming it's because they figure that the pain is caused by inflammation, the inflammation of the nerve. Um, and so what they're trying to do is they're trying to reverse the inflammation through local, a sort of a topical application. But in my experience, the pain is not caused by inflammation. It's caused by pressure from the uh, expansion of the um, fluid caused by the bacteria growing inside the tooth. Um, and not, uh, and, and certainly by the time that you uh, open it up and put something inside it, you know, the, the, the nerve is well dead at this point. And, and you can test this with, if you've got an electronic pulp tester and you put it on the tooth, then uh, generally at that point you get a, a, a reading which indicates that there's no electrical activity inside the tooth at all. And that's pretty diagnostic, uh, diagnostic in terms of uh, and knowing where to root treat a tooth. I do thoroughly recommend that you get an electronic pulp tester. If you, if you haven't got one, it's something I use pretty much daily um, and uh, it's very useful. And if someone comes in with some sort of uh, weird pain, that's characteristic sort of throbbing or worse with um, hot things and you take an x-ray and you can't see anything and you slap the old EPT on it and it comes up with a reading of a 61 or whatever then you know that uh, the nerves died and so you can say pretty diagnosed I always say this tooth dead as a dodo uh, it needs root filling or uh, or extracting so <clears throat> anyway what happened was the um, English dentists or UK dentists got, got their hand on, on this uh, leather mix, strong steroid from France, and they realised that uh, if they had a tooth which was acting a bit inconveniently, um, what they could do is they could open it up and slap a bit of uh, leather mix inside it, and they could stick a crown on, and it might be years. It might be years before the patient comes back into another dentist in another part of the country and says, my tooth's playing up, it feels weird. Um, it's very difficult to EPT a tooth that's got a crown on because porcelain doesn't conduct electricity and so you can't, uh, you can't get a do a vitality test very easily on a tooth, but then it might be a bit sensitive if you tap it, it might sound slightly different uh, to the rest of the teeth or it might, uh, you know, the patient might say that it feels slightly different to the rest of the teeth. But a tooth that's um, uh, suffered a, a pulp death that's been suppressed by a strong steroid, where, where the reaction, you know, the uh, body's natural reaction to having dead tissue in it is, is been suppressed by a strong steroid, is quite difficult to diagnose. And I'm pleased to say we don't really see uh, Cressif um, uh, we don't see it so much, uh, the uh, steroid. And the way you can tell is uh, when you eventually open the tooth up, uh, it's got a very, very bright yellow colour and uh, it smells very characteristically of sort of an iodine type smell. And you know that two or three years ago or five years ago or ten years ago, some dentists just didn't want to root treat that tooth and so they just slapped um, leather mix inside it. And the patient went away, happy as Larry. Anyway, just to conclude this story, so this dentist, uh, so I said to this lady, you know, uh, we, we, uh, this tooth needs root filling and uh, it needs, uh, we're going to have to drill through the crown and uh, make a hole in it. So this is someone who's like not happy with a half shade mismatch on the crown on an upper left seven. It's hardly going to be pleased about having an occlusal composite in the biting surface. And, um, and it's going to be a difficult root filling because, uh, you know, we've got no clues as to the internal anatomy. Normally, when you're looking for a nerve inside a tooth, you know pretty much where it's going to be because you've got the external anatomy to guide you. But uh, where you've got no um, external anatomy, it's, it's often difficult to work out where you are internally.
So anyway, we gave her a quote for it. And then the next day she sent us an email and said, look, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, I forgot to tell you, I did see another dentist about this and uh, they referred me to a specialist endodontist. Um, and, but they don't have an appointment for six weeks. But I just thought you ought to know. Now, what's happened is this woman has been to see the local Sainsbury's dentist and didn't get on brilliantly with them. Uh, but has pretty well got an accurate diagnosis and, and a referral, which I'll come to later, um, has decided that she would rather come and see me because I'm funnier, basically. She just likes me. Because when I went through the medical history and I said to her, are you colorblind? And she said, no. And I said, well, it would have been good if you had been because you wouldn't have had all this trouble with your crowns. And she thought this is highly hilarious, you know. This is the sort of joke I make. I'm very unfiltered. And so um, she thought, after on reflection, when she went home, that she'd like to come to my practice instead. And so, therefore, she thought she'd she better come clean because I'm probably going to find out later, sooner or later anyway that uh, she's got this specialist endodontist uh, uh, appointment. So now, and that put me in a very difficult position because um, we put her in a more difficult position because first of all, she's trying to micromanage her treatment, right? Anyone, you know, anyone who, when you say, oh, I'm gonna have to drill through the crown, you know, uh, who says, oh, no, no, I don't want that. They're, they're micromanaging their treatment. Uh, and you have to knock that on the head straight away. And the way I do it is by saying, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll just remake the crown afterwards. Once we're sure the root treatment's settled down, we'll make, remake the crown afterwards. But, um, you know, if you've got unlimited funds, that's fine. I will remake the crown for you. That's not a problem. And if you are ultra sensitive over the color of the tooth, then that's fine as well. I said, but I personally, I can't even see that crown. She said, oh, well, I can. So I said, well, all right then, okay, if you can and you want it perfect, that's fine, that again, that's not a problem. I'll make you five crowns uh, from slightly too light to slightly too dark, and one of them's bound to be the right color, and we'll um, charge you five times as much, and we'll stick on the best one, and you can put the other four in your drawer. That's fine. Okay, that's the plan then, you know. And they're like, ooh, ooh, I didn't want that to be the plan. So, not only that, she's, she's withheld material facts with regard to her own treatment, right? She's, uh, I don't believe for a second that she forgot that she'd been to another dentist about this tooth and has got a referral to a specialist endodontist. And uh, in six weeks' time, and completely forgot that, she deliberately withheld that information. Um, and so that's what puts me in a difficult position because she's not telling me the whole truth. Um, and she's inviting me to get involved in a situation where one dentist probably caused the problem and didn't want to deal with it. And uh, she's now seen a second dentist who has identified the problem and doesn't want to deal with it and has referred to a third dentist, you know, who's going to get paid, I don't know, 2,000 quid or something, whatever specialist endodontists charge these days for an upper left seven molar root treatment uh, on someone who's so dentally aware. Um, and, um, and now um, she's come to me, a fourth dentist, and invited me to sort of just jump in in the middle of the whole bloody thing. So... <clears throat> So I, I said to her, I just wrote back politely and said, uh, I don't think it'd be a good idea for me to, you know, I'm, I'm gonna bow out. Like they'd say on the Red Dragon's Den, I'm out, you know, cause it's a, uh, I didn't say to her, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm pissed off that you, uh, you, you never mentioned any of this, that you withheld all this information. But uh, that's, you know, you should be honest with your dentist. You've got to be honest with your dentist, all right? There's no point withholding information. You've got to tell them everything because she's only ended up in the same position that she would have been if she told me on the day. She just wasted my time and she's wasted her time and she's pissed me off and I'm much less likely to see her again in the future now because, um, because uh, she's a manipulative, <laughs> you know, manipulative gal. 
Right. Okay. Anyway, that's uh, today's story. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.